guys, welcome to my channel. So if you're new to this channel, hi, I'm Rebecca. But if you're already subscribed, welcome back. So I promised to do a video regarding my first professional exam in medical school because a lot of you are curious about the process of it and what components are tested. So I would say that this first professional exam is really important for all of us because we have it at the end of semester 3. If you fail to pass that exam, you won't be able to proceed to semester 4. You would have to repeat the whole semester 3. I can totally understand if you guys come to me and tell me that you are super stressed and you don't know what to expect from this exam because I felt the same way too. So since I have passed the whole examination, I think I'm able to share to you guys briefly about the whole process of the exam, my study routine and also some tips on how I successfully passed the examination in one go. So for the first part, I'll be talking about the structure of the first professional exam and I'll be also giving you guys some example questions so make sure to stay tuned. So for our first professional exam, we are tested on two components, theory and also OSCE. Theory holds 40% and OSCE holds 60%. You will have to pass both components in order for you to pass overall. So right now, I'll be explaining about the theory part. So we had two papers for our theory. We had SE Q and OSP. So the duration of the exam is 2 hours per paper and we had only one exam per day. For SEQ, we had about 8 questions. For OSP, I kind of forget but I know it's more than that. So probably about 10 to 16 questions. Both papers are computer based. We had to go to the computer lab to sit for the exam. So based on my experience, I can say that for the theory part, it's quite hectic because since we had a lot of questions that we had to answer within 2 hours, we definitely can't stop typing and we had to be 100% focused so by the end of the examination you will feel super drained and super tired since SEQ stands for short essay question you will definitely have to write a lot and elaborate a lot on your points compared to OSPI for OSPI you just have to either label or just give short answers so it's definitely much more easier however for OSPI you will have to know a lot a lot a lot of anatomy and also history so right now, I'm going to give you some example questions and I know that a lot of you will want to know what they would ask in exams, right? Which student wouldn't want to know? So like I mentioned just now, we had about 8 SEQ questions. One SEQ question is further divided into 5 more questions. It carries about 20 marks, yes, it's quite heavy. So for example, they give you a case of elephantiasis. Some question might already tell you that it's elephantiasis, but some they will be just hinting. So let's say they give you a case that's hinting about elephantiasis, but... They never say that's elephantiasis. They will ask you about the causative agent, the pathophysiology of this disease, what is the recommended treatment, what drug you would give to the patient, and also how to prevent the spread of this disease. One tip that I have for you guys who are sitting for your first professional exam soon is that when you are elaborating on your answer, you will have to assume that your examiner doesn't know anything about this case. You will have to explain in detail, not assuming that the examiner knows what you're talking about. For OSPI, they'll give you tons of pictures including anatomy and histology questions. Let's say they give you a picture of the internal organs in the abdomen and then they will ask you to label the organs, what are the blood supply apply for the liver, how does the liver develop, something like that. So for another scenario, they will give you a histology picture. So for example, they might give you a picture that shows charcoal laden crystals or Kirschman spirals and then you will have to know what is that. Then you will have to tell them your possible diagnosis, the treatment for this patient and what anatomical structure is involved in this case. So right now we are moving to OSCE that carries about 60%. Our OSCE was for 2 days. Each day we had 6 stations. We will have about 7 minutes for each station. 2 minutes will be for reading the case and 5 minutes will be for you to carry out the examination. So for example, at the history taking station, they will tell you that the patient comes with high fever for the past 1 week and have muscle aches. You will have to rule out different diseases. So for example, you are suspecting dengue, right? You will have to ask specific questions like do you realize that your gum was bleeding when you're brushing your teeth do you have any pain at the back of your eye do you have any rash on your body so do people do fogging frequently at your residential area so certain questions like that to show the examiner that you are suspecting 
this disease and why you are thinking that it is this disease. So at the physical examination station, they will probably tell you that the patient is present with a lump in her breast. So they will ask you to examine the axilla lymph nodes and also the lump itself. So you basically have to palpate for each lymph node at your axilla area and also describe the lump. Size of it, site, mobility, temperature, consistency, the margin of it, whether it's well defined or poorly defined. Okay, so we are finally done with the structure of the first professional exam. I know it's very, very detailed and it's very lengthy, but that's the whole purpose of this video. I would say that this exam period was definitely very hectic very physically and emotionally draining and also very stressful. Despite all that, I successfully passed the examination in one go and I'm right now in my semester 5. So yeah, I'm kind of brave enough to tell you guys what I did and share my study routine. I think I mentioned this in a lot of my video that everything that I'll be sharing is based on my experience and my own preference. So whatever that may work for me might not work for you. So right now, I'll be sharing to you guys my study routine that I had 2 months before my exam and I have diligently followed it up to the week of my exam. 6.30 to 7 a.m. will be the time for me to wake up and to freshen up. 7 to 10 a.m. will be my study sessions. I will go through my lecture notes, do some questions. 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. will be the time for me to practice OSCE with my friends. 12 to 1 p.m. will be lunch breaks. 1 to 6.30 p.m. will be another study session. 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. is my dinner break. 8.30 p.m. to 2 a.m. will be another study session. During my exam preparation period, I study about 14 to 16 hours per day depending on my mood. So yeah, as you can see from my study routine, it is super packed, filled with continuous study and super stressful. Even though it's my study routine, I can say that it's super unhealthy and it's actually crazy for me to have that study routine. I didn't have enough sleep. I was wasn't exercising, I have no time for long entertainment to release my stress and also because my schedule was super packed and I didn't have enough rest, I got sick about two times during the exam preparation period. It sucked so bad because even though I was sick, I couldn't recuperate properly. I just take like 5 to 10 minutes nap and like I had to go, go, go. So but unhealthy, don't do that. The reason why I feel that my study routine was like that is because this is my first time sitting for the professional exam. So I didn't really know how to manage my time because I was scared that if I chill a little bit, I will be missing out on my studies. So right now, since I'm preparing for my first professional exam part 2 that I'll be taking in November, I'm definitely having a more healthy study routine. I'm including exercises, getting enough of sleep. I'm doing my YouTube video that is a stress reliever for me. To be honest, I'm not sure if I'm managing my time well just because I know that it's gonna be an open book examination or it's just based on my past experience. I would definitely not recommend you guys my study routine for my first professional exam because you can plan and do it way better than I did. But personally for me, I wouldn't want it any other way. I can't imagine what would have happened if my study routine wasn't that way, you know? So it's all based on your personal preference and whether you can handle the stress. I'm very, very thankful because despite the crazy study schedule, I was able to manage my stress well. This is all thanks to support from my family, especially my sisters. They would come over anytime just to give me food and also bring me out. Other than my sisters, I'm also very thankful to my group of friends. When you're preparing for an exam in a group, all of you are basically in the same situation in the same boat so you wouldn't feel discouraged because you know that we have to get through this together so I feel that it's very important to have that in medical school other than my friends and my family members the reason why I could pull through that crazy period is because I was looking forward to have a holiday I don't want to repeat my examination because if I had to repeat my examination I wouldn't be able to go for my Europe trip and that sucks because it involves a lot of money basically having a holiday was my source of motivation motivation as well. Last but not least, I only have so much strength and courage. It's only because of God. God really pulled me through the whole stressful period. It was a really really crazy period. Without God's help, I wouldn't be able to get where I am right now. <sighs> 
Okay, so right now let's move on to part 3 where I'll be sharing about some tips on how I managed to pass my first professional exam in one go. The first tip, make a schedule. You would want to be on track and you wouldn't want to waste any time that you have in a day. You are able to maximize the time that you have even if it's just 5 to 10 minutes. When you're preparing for your exam, 24 hours per day is really really not enough. You will have to properly manage your time because if you don't manage your time, you're going to waste so much time and you're not going to be on track. Also, there are some things that I did to stick to my schedule properly. Everyone can make a schedule but not everybody sticks to their schedule. So some of the things that I did was to avoid distractions. For me, my phone is my biggest distraction. So I installed some application restrictor where I can only open the application at certain times of the day or at the end of the day. So I felt that that really helped because I'm always scrolling through my Instagram and YouTube. Most of the time, I also silent my phone because because there are tons of messages that were coming in I felt that it's really really annoying The second tip would be plan your studies ahead Oh my god, I can't tell you how important it is to plan your studies Because you will have tons of lectures to go through We were tested for 6 system in our first professional exam And one system would be about 40 lectures So we had about 240 lectures to go through That's crazy It's not something like you can fully memorize after you go through your first round of revision You will definitely have to have two to three times of revision. The reason why I like to plan my studies ahead is because I would want to go through my materials two to three times before the examination and also I like to keep my one week prior to the exam free. During that week, I like to correct my sleep schedule. I will have enough six to seven hours sleep. This is just to basically prevent me from being sluggish during my exams. During this period, I like to go through example questions and also just kind of refresh my memory. In order for me to do all of that, I need a track. I found the exam countdown application to be really good because it really keeps me on track and it tells me how many days I have left to the examination. So for the third tip is to practice OSCE with your friends consistently. I also cannot stress how important it is to practice your OSCE consistently because when you practice consistently, right, you will have muscle memory. Your hand will automatically know what to do with the patient, what examination to carry out. And also by practicing consistently, you will already have a structure in your mind to follow. The examination that you carry out will be more structured. You won't have to practice that often at the start of your or semester because you will have other things to do but probably one month before your examination you will want to have three to four times of practice per week two hours per session so during our OSCE practice session we will normally do lots and lots of history taking and also physical examination according to cases so we will normally get the cases online or uh, we will take it from the book that we already have and also we will time ourselves because since the real OSCE scenario is 7 minutes we will have to know how to manage our time well to be done in 7 minutes for my fourth tip is to manage your mental health well I won't go too much into it because I already made a video on how I manage my stress so you guys can check the video out over here some of you might want to be on the dean list or have good results I understand that but if you don't have good mental health you won't be able to do all of of the things that you want to do so it's really really important for you to manage your mental health well so i hope that you guys found all of the information that i gave useful and don't be stressed don't be anxious just plan well and you will succeed in medical school don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and give this video a thumbs up and comment down the section below if you have any video suggestion and any questions that you want me to answer i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys